What's going on? How's it going? It's Jesse, and you guys are on painting with Jesse. It is 10 minutes before we actually get started. So hopefully everybody's having an amazing day. I know I am. It's a little rainy out here in Southern California. I actually started raining about maybe a couple of hours ago. Woke up to a cloudy morning, and then sometime about, like I said, maybe, maybe two hours ago, started raining. Let's see. Do we have anybody on? Yes, we do. We've already started to get people jumping on to the live feed. So fantastic. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes while you guys get on here. Let's see who's the first person on here. What's happening? Diane Layton, first comment of the day. Good afternoon to you, Diane. Lulu Cole, can you send me the link? Lulu, it happens right here. You don't need a link. Okay, the, this is happening right here. I'm not sure what you mean about the link, but it happens right here on Facebook and on YouTube. I'm live streaming to both Facebook and YouTube. Okay, what's happening, guys? Let's see, Jordan Asbury. Awesome, Jordan. Happy birthday. First birthday celebration of the day is Jordan Asbury. Happy birthday to you. Anybody else celebrating birthdays, please make sure you guys put it down in the comments section. Okay? That'd be fantastic to know so, we can, so everyone can say hello to you. What's happening? Jessica Sigler from Pennsylvania. Isabel Torres, hello. Awesome, Jordan. I'm excited, too. We're going to have a good time today, of course, drawing and painting uh, with this cool little cat in the hat theme. So anyway, folks, we're just going to give it a few minutes here to let, let everyone get on. We are going to be getting started right about at 3 o'clock my time, which is about eight minutes away. At that point, we'll start talking about all the uh, supplies, et cetera, et cetera. And Eric Perez from New York. What's happening all the way out in New York? Let's see. Who else's birthday? I see somebody else's birthday on here. looks like. Tanya DeFilippo, happy birthday to you too. Awesome, two birthdays so far. Krista Osanya from New Mexico. What's happening, Krista? Welcome, welcome. Let's see, Marilyn Rivera from, from uh, Puerto Rico. Fantastic. What's happening, Marilyn? How are you? So Canada, Amber Anderson. What's up, Amber? All right, guys. So anyway, um, while you guys are jumping on here, getting ready to to our little event today. Just want to go over what's happening over the next couple of days. We've got a couple of really nice events. Oh, guys, let me know if you guys can hear me. Make sure you guys can hear me. If somebody could give me a uh, yeah, put it down in the comment section. That would be fantastic. That way I know you guys can all hear me okay. Looks like I'm not muted or anything like that. But anyway, all right, guys. So for you, the one know what's happening this week, maybe you're new to the page, maybe you haven't been keeping up with uh, the event calendar. Uh, awesome, Lorianne, thank you, thank you. Awesome, Eric, thank you guys so much. Yeah, I can't always tell when, I, when uh, I'm on. Anyway, tomorrow, three o'clock West Coast time. For those of you that are joining in, we're gonna be doing Easter Spring Bunny, okay? That's tomorrow, 3 p.m. For those of you that didn't know, same as today, just come on, in, come on and join me, the event. If you guys go over to the event tab, you guys will get all the details uh, for this event, supplies list. I did show you guys how to draw this from scratch. However, I did. I am providing a stencil for to use one. If you guys look under the discussion tab, one of the first comments there should be uh, the regarding the stencils that you guys can download directly from there. Okay, so again, this is tomorrow. Today's Wednesday, right? So tomorrow, Thursday, 3 p.m. West Coast time. Okay, so same time as today. Whatever, wherever you are, same time as today. This is tomorrow. Then this Saturday, okay, this, this coming Saturday, don't know how many of you join me for the Valentine's Gnomes. Well, we're making the St. Patrick's version of those. That's this coming Saturday. It's earlier in the day on Saturday. Don't remember what my time is. I, maybe it's 11, 12, 1, I don't remember. But go check it out, event tab. You'll find the information for this one also teaching you guys how to draw this from scratch as well, but I am providing stencils for those of you that would like to use them. Basically, their stencils are traceable so you can download directly from the discussion tab. Okay, that's this week. Got a lot more stuff coming up in March, so make sure you guys are following along, paying attention to when I post. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to like the page, follow the page, so you guys can get all the notifications of all the stuff that is coming up, okay? And for those of you that, are, that don't know, I am uh, broadcasting both to Facebook and to YouTube, <clears throat> okay? So this is happening on Facebook 
and YouTube, I believe this is about the fifth or sixth session that we've done on both platforms so that, uh, you know, we can reach a wider audience. I know some people prefer YouTube. What's cool about YouTube is that you can actually pause, back up, jump ahead, not jump ahead, right? You can only jump as far ahead as, as uh, wherever I am in the process. But YouTube allows you on the live feed to back it up and pause it, whereas Facebook does not, okay? On Facebook, if you're watching along with the live feed, you can't, you can't back up. I believe you might be able to pause, but you can't back up. Uh, and then once you play, get, hit play again, it jumps you forward all the way to the current, you know, uh, to the live part. So there's an, an advantage to watching on YouTube. If you, for those of you that like YouTube better, again, we're broadcasting to both. You have a little bit of time if you're on Facebook to jump over to YouTube if you'd like. The channel name is exactly the same, Painting with Jesse, J-E-S-S-E. -S -S so again, there's a few minutes left. If you guys want to jump over to YouTube instead, you can pause and back it up there, whereas you cannot on Facebook. Now, of course, those of you that are new don't know this, but all of my videos get recorded, and immediately after the live sessions are over, I post them to the uh, live tab on the main page here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook. Also, YouTube, the video gets saved there as well. If you guys cannot paint with us today or right now, you guys can come back later, tomorrow, the next day, and you'll find the video in the archives of the page, okay? So if you guys can't join in today, you guys can get a chance. We'll get a chance to uh, paint along with this at a later time, okay? And if you guys, that's probably the most common question that comes up. So if you guys see somebody asking that question in the comment section, please be sure to let them know. Yes, they can watch this video at a later time. Uh, I leave the videos up so far. I haven't removed any of the videos that I've posted. I keep saying I'm only going to leave them up for, for a limited amount of time. But so far, all of the sessions that we've done it's the last March. Or, yeah, we're almost we're closing in. I think it was the end of March last year or the beginning of April when we, when we did the very first uh, session here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook. But uh, anyway, all the videos that we've done so far are available to watch under that live tab on the main Painting with Jesse page. On Facebook, I have quite a few of them loaded up to YouTube as well. All right. So anyway, cool. Amanda Rose says, my kids just had their Dr. Seuss theme in school today. Perfect timing. Well, yesterday was Dr. Seuss's birthday, right? And of course, this is, this is the week uh, where Read Across America kind of uh, traditionally has celebrated uh, Dr. Seuss. I don't know how far back the whole history behind uh, the Read Across America goes, uh, but I know that at least for a few years, Read Across America did uh, celebrate Dr. Seuss along with, with uh, uh, you know, just kind of a general Read Across America theme. So we are celebrating that today. I am a Dr. Seuss fan. Uh, Cat, the Cat in the Hat is one of the, you know, the coolest books that I remember as a, as a kid. So uh, that's what we're doing. That's why we're doing this today. What's happening, Frankie Gonzalez? What's up, buddy? How are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, Jamie Lynn Morris is posting a link in the description. I'm not sure what that is, but um, maybe it's to my Facebook page. I don't know. Okay, I don't want to go and click on that. But uh, anyhow, that's why we're doing this this week. I do have uh, a Dr. Seuss. Ooh, I had it here earlier. Back in um, back during Christmas, we did do the Dr. Seuss Christmas event. We painted, uh, not Dr. Seuss, right? It is from Dr. Seuss, but the Grinch. Uh, we did a Grinchmas painting um, back in January, back in December. I apologize. My brain's a little bit slow today. Back in December, we did do a Grinch painting. If you guys are interested in checking that out, again, go to that live tab on the main painting with Jesse Page. You'll find that old video. All right. Yeah, Diane. <laughs> Diane says, Jesse works hard to provide the events at no cost to you. If you don't approve the comment, go away. If you want to rent, go off. Somebody must be saying something about Dr. Seuss in the comments. Somebody must be complaining about something. I didn't see it. But absolutely, guys, if somebody has a problem with what we've got today, I don't know what the issue might be. But, you know, obviously you have an opportunity. You don't have to be here. Not that I, I'm trying to show anybody away. Anybody that's going to come in and have fun with the event today, enjoy uh, painting, etc. You're more than welcome to be here, all ages, all skill levels, etc. But if you're coming with a crappy attitude or bad attitude and you've got some stuff to complain about, please leave it out of here. Uh, if I see you in the comments being rude or anything like that, you will get banned from the page. So please, let's not go there. 
Let's just have a good time. Whatever your thoughts may be on whatever it is that's happening in your life today, I just come on here with a happy attitude. Let's have a good time, okay? So anyway. Uh, anyway, yeah, so I must have missed a comment because I'm looking, I'm seeing a couple of people complaining about it. Let's see. All right, what else do we got, guys? Okay, cool. So it is 3 o'clock officially. So once again, my name is Jesse. You guys are on Painting with Jesse here on Facebook and also on YouTube now. Okay, this will be about the sixth broadcast of a live session to YouTube. We're doing, we're doing a simultaneous broadcast. For those of you that are on YouTube, you have a little bit of an advantage because you can pause and back up the video. You can, you know, um, do a few more extra things that you can here on Facebook that you can on Facebook. So uh, that's the cool thing about doing this on YouTube. Facebook does not allow you to back up a live stream session. However, both on both uh, platforms, I am going to be leaving the recorded session uploaded once there, once we're done with the live session today. So as soon as we're done today, I hit the save button and it gets saved to both Facebook and YouTube. So if you guys cannot paint with me today or right now, right at this moment, you can always come back and paint with a recorded session. Same thing happens with, let's say as we're going along, we are going to be painting for quite a while. We're going to probably take about two hours and 45 minutes to do this. You cannot rush this kind of stuff. I'm teaching you guys how to draw everything from scratch. Obviously painting from scratch takes a while to build up to create something like this. If you guys cannot continue with me the whole time and you have to leave at a certain point, again, don't worry. You can come back and continue with that recorded session. Okay, so that is that. So let us talk about what we are going to use as far as supplies today. I'm painting with acrylic paint. You can paint with whatever you've got, markers, colored pencils, watercolors, etc. Okay, the colors that I'm going to use are pretty self-apparent. If you look at the paint, there's a blue. Uh, there's red, there's white, there's black. Okay, and then I'm using a, a peach salmon color for the fish. So when you look at it, it's a little bit of a salmon color, uh, but the combination that I'm going to be using, I don't have that color made. I'll be mixing it when we get to that point, but I'm going to be mixing a little bit of red, a little bit of pink, and maybe a little bit of orange. If you've got red, orange, white, you're going to be fine. You can make your mixture to match the colors or a similar color to what I got on the original paint. Okay. I always have extra paper towels because messes do happen. So make sure you guys have some paper towels. I use plates as my palettes. The colors, I spread the colors, put the colors right on here. Again, white. So the colors that I'll be using are white, red, black. I've got a pink and an orange. I actually have a little bit of orange here that I'll be mixing with the red to make my fish color. And then I've got, I've got this. It looks like I've got a lot more paint on here than the, that. And then that was the dark blue I'm using for my background. All this other stuff is dry from a previous painting session. I try to use my, my plates, uh, you know, try to, to use a plate, the plates as long as I can before I throw them in the trash. But I got some dark blues for my background. Okay. Now, I was hoping to have uh, some new chalk today to be able to draw with. I wasn't able to stop by the art store. But I will be drawing the piece with a pencil. Got any erases as we go along. Now we are going to be drawing first. I know some of you got so cut out that I provided. We're going to be doing that part first. I normally do the background uh, first before we actually draw. Then I like to draw over my background. It makes for a nice and smooth, clean background. However, because we've got such, at least I'm going to be using such a dark color of paint on that background, I don't want to contend trying to do white over that dark blue. It would take too many coats to be able to as white as it is there. Okay, so I'm gonna be drawing first, then I'll be painting the background around it. Then we go in over our cat, our fish bowl, and the, uh, our fish, little fish floating around, okay? Uh, now, before I forget, because I often forget, I do have a blow dryer handy. It helps speed up the drying process, things up in general, so I do have a blow dryer that I'll be using at some uh, point during the process. If you don't have a blow dryer, don't worry about it too much, but I do recommend one. Now, as far as the brushes go, I have a couple of brushes that I listed under the event uh, details, but here they are. I'm going to show them here on this camera here. I've got a two-inch to be using for the majority of when I do that, okay? Large, flat brush, okay? Now, I've got a 
one inch flat brush as well. Okay. Same thing, kind of be working this to, to work in that background color. I might use it on some of the other parts, but primarily those two large brushes are for my background. Okay, and then, now any, any combination similar to this is, is all you need. You don't have to be specific and, and use the exact same brushes that I've got. I think when I listed the supplies list, I said a number five filbert. This is a number eight filbert, whether it's a five filbert, number eight, doesn't really matter too much. He's got a nice edge. It allows me to paint on the inside of these curved areas. Just makes it a little bit easier if you don't have a filbert brush. Don't worry about it. Uh, as long as you've got something similar to this, a flat brush, a little uh, number eight. All it is is a squared off top. It's all you're really going to need. Okay. So again, if you don't have that filbert rounded top filbert, you can use this no problem. Then I've got two small round brushes, okay, little pointy, skinny things, and I'm mostly going to be doing the uh, drawing, like with the, the eye outline and outlining uh, things like the hat, etc. I've got a uh, number three round and a, and a number zero round. Just little tiny, skinny, pointy brushes is what I'm going to be using. I mentioned I've got a bunch of paper towels here, okay? Uh, always have extra paper towels. Now the last thing that I use is I have some water in it. Once we get going, my brush is say water cup. That's keep them from drying out, okay? If you guys don't have, make sure you guys have a water cup if you're painting with acrylic paints because otherwise your paint will dry on the brushes and your brushes will get ruined. I'm gonna try to remember at the very end of the session, care of your brushes. I know I always remember afterwards and I'm like, oh, I forgot to talk about how to, how to tell people to clean up, clean up the brushes so they can Last a really long time, use them over and over and over again. Sessions today, I'm going to try to remember to, uh, to do it, okay? But all right, all right, folks. Yes, Liliana said, or Liliana Roberto Garcia asks, are you going to paint thing one? And they're absolutely, I actually considered doing that for today's session, um, but definitely in the future, maybe, who knows, maybe even at the end of, towards the end of the month. Thing one and thing two would be really cool to do. It'd be a really fun session. So perhaps. What's happening, Hannah? Herrera, what's happening? What's happening? Let's see, guys. I, I see people talking about cutting in and out. So sometimes on that, you will get some video glitches, audio glitches happen. And if you, normally, from what I've seen, it's usually on the end of, on the user end. So on your end, sometimes if your internet uh, quality drops a little bit, you'll get some video cutouts, audio cutouts. What I recommend, if it if it continues, let's say you're having some issues and that you know continuously uh, step away, maybe close your uh, session, close the Facebook or YouTube, and come back in and join back in again. So come back in, and that often fixes the issue. Okay, let's see. I'm hearing somebody else saying that I'm breaking up. Okay, let me see if I can fix this. Hold on, it might be my. Uh, Let's see if this does any better, okay? I'm using, I'm actually having to use uh, a microphone, the microphone on my headset to provide the audio for this. So hopefully that fixed it. It might've been because it was under my collar and it was as I'm moving around, it, it kind of, maybe that was the issue. We'll see. We'll see that, that, hopefully that fixes it. You guys will let me know, okay? But all right, folks, we're going pretty quickly here. We're gonna start with the drawing part of it first. Okay, let me switch the view here. So that, whoops, not that one, this one right here. So you guys get a better shot of what it is that I'm doing. Okay, we're gonna go very slowly here at the beginning. Now I'm going to be using a pencil as I mentioned. If you guys have chalk, my, my uh, preferred way to do this is to uh, use chalk for this. But since I'm out of my dark chalk, we are not gonna be using chalk today. Okay, or at least I'm not, but got my pencil right here. What I'd like to do first is just kind of look at what we're going to be drawing. Now the, I've got the painting turned towards me a little bit, so it's easier for me to see what I've got to draw, okay, right over here. But I'm using a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Forgot to mention that earlier, but I'm using a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Whatever canvas size you're using, you're gonna be okay. Just You're just gonna change your proportions a little bit. So a couple of things, if I was to draw a line straight down the middle, 
down my canvas like this, that line <clears throat> lands about right here. So about where the cheek protrudes on, on our cat. Okay, right about right here. Okay, so if I was to draw a line right here, and I'm actually going to do, do a really light one. You're not going to see it much. Just You can draw this line if you'd like. We're going to be erasing this later. But I'm just drawing a nice, light pencil line down the middle of my canvas. Okay? So, again, this cheek is going to be over here somewhere. Just to give me kind of a position to look at, a placement point of where that, about where that cheek is going to be. I can also, if I want, go like this, right, and take halfway across my canvas. And I'm... And I'm I'm not measuring anything. I'm just eyeballing about the halfway point across my canvas would be right, right here, about right here. And that goes across the eyes and the forehead. So again, about right here, I'm just going to draw a nice little light line. You guys can't see my lines in this case here. Don't worry about it. Just know that there's a couple of lines here. You guys can draw these lines if you'd like. All this does is it helps me position, makes it a little easier to place my, all the, uh, you know, like my cat's head, the fish bowl, the fish, etc. Just have four little quadrants here. All right. Now, if you guys have your stencil, what you guys want to do is position your stencil so that you've got more of your towards the left. Obviously, you want to leave enough space for your bowl, for your fish, etc. We're going to get right into it. Right here at the bottom. Okay, we're going to get right into this drawing part. We're going to start with our cat's head right here at the bottom of the canvas. From here, from the bottom of the edge of the canvas to the about where the the neck would start, I've got probably about three inches. And that's gonna be around, right in here somewhere. Now, I'm using really light pencil lines on mine so I can erase them. I'm making them, I'm actually making, making them a little bit darker than I normally would. Uh, so you guys, so it's easier for you guys to see them. But this right here, I'm placing that about where the bottom, right in here, right where the neck would start where the bottom of the head would be, that's about right here, okay? Now, remember we, do, we did these two lines across, and I said this right here, this part of the cheek, is so that line would run right about down here, so that's about here. Okay, over on this side, I'm just gonna draw a little curved line. Now, this is a really rough sketch that I'm doing right now. As I go, I'll start to refine my lines. Let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Okay, so about right here, now you guys notice, I've got all of these lines. I'm making all of these lines like this, okay? In a bit, once I know where, where everything's gonna be, I'll go in and do a little bit of erasing. But this is that cheek. Okay, this is the bottom part of our head. Now I'm gonna come over to this side. On my original, I probably have about two inches, two and a half inches from the edge. So I can just kind of mark this off. What I'm doing right now is I'm laying down the general uh, edges of where everything's going to be, okay? So this, of course, is this part. Then we've got this here, and we've got the bottom. We know where the bottom is. We know where the left side is. We know where the right side is. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and mark off where the top part is. And the top part, top of the head, right where the hat would be, the edge of the hat would be, is about right here. Now, again, folks, we take our time with this. There's no rushing. I understand, I understand some of you like to go very quickly through all of this, but that not, that's not what this is about. I want you guys to all, for the most part, be able to keep up, okay, and also to learn a little bit for those of you who want to do everything from scratch like I am. So we've got the top, okay, we've got the edge, the, both sides, and then we've got, we've got the bottom. Now I can start to add some more detail, okay? So from right here, we're going to go up. Of course, this is the front of the head here, the forehead. Okay. Now from here, we can connect these. Okay. We can bring this down. And watch what I would, the way I'm holding my pencil, way back here, nice and loose. Okay. This in here somewhere is that edge. Okay. And I can even do this, bring this down a little bit. That's where my neck is going to start. Okay, now I'm going to bring this over. 
For those of you that are that have been with me for a while, you guys know how we do this. I give you guys some steps, a step or two, and then I give you a little time to implement that on your end. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for a moment. I'm going to come over and let, give you guys a little time to uh, to catch up. Sorry, guys. I know there's some spamming that sometimes goes on in the comments. Please ignore any of that stuff. Don't click on any links. Guys, am I still cutting out? Hey, a lot of you guys are saying that I'm cutting out. Okay, I'm not. Let me know, guys, if I'm still cutting out. What's happening, Gloria Marie? Guys, let me know in the comments if I'm still cutting out, okay? Okay, Brianna Marie says, no, you aren't. Penny Colt says, yes. <laughs> and then somebody else says, yes, he is. Tabitha, okay. All right. Mary Lou Moran says, a little. Okay, let me see if I can. Okay, let me see if I can fix this. I'm, I'm seeing some of you guys saying no. Some of you guys are saying yes. Um. Yes, you are. I think you're only cutting out on YouTube. No, I see some people saying Facebook. All right. Okay, let me see if we can solve this, guys. Give me a second, okay? Say, Lupe Dominguez says no. Lisa Guarino says to me. Lupe Dominguez says, yeah, not here. Um, Penny Colt, how's it sounding? Weird. Some of you guys are saying that I'm not cutting out, and then some of you guys are saying that I am. So not sure what's happening. Okay, let me, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Let's see if the issue doesn't get resolved here. If it does not, then we're going to have to think of something else. I'll try to figure out how to fix it, okay? Maybe I'll have to connect a different mic to this. But uh, uh, let, me, let me go down in the comments. I hear you just fine. You're good. Is it specific to YouTube or Facebook? It sounds good. Great sounds for me. So some of you guys saying that I sound great. Others of you are saying that, it, that I do not. So let's see if it goes away. Okay, let's give it a couple minutes. We're, I'm going to continue over here. Let's see if it goes away. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. Don't know what's happening. It's the same process that I used last time and we we're okay. So hopefully it's just something that, uh, that get, will get resolved here pretty shortly. But okay, here we go. So we've got, we've got the outside of the left side of the so the left side of the face, we've got the cheek, the head, we've got the outline of the bottom part of the hat, the brim. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw this ear. And that ear is right in here somewhere. All it is is a little curved line on the top and then a little curved line on the bottom. They both connect to a little point up on top. Okay. I want, I need, what I got to watch out for is that I leave enough room for my hat, okay, at the top, and then of course, towards the edge. So for those of you that are drawing this freehand, be careful, otherwise you're gonna have to tip your hat a little bit to the inside, okay? So I wanna make sure that the hat, I leave enough room to be able to angle my hat back towards the left corner, upper left corner a little bit. But okay, let's continue. Actually guys, give me a second, I'm gonna step back a little bit. Looks like from what I can see, this is a little, wider than what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of little refinements. This is why we do this with pencil. I'm going to go through here and I'm going to just minimize this a little bit. I'll check in with you guys in just a bit as far as the audio is concerned. Okay. Give me a, give me just a little bit. I'm going to outline a few little steps here and then I'll check in on that audio. Hopefully the problem's gone away by then. So I'm just going to minimize this just a little bit. I'm just making the uh, cheek a little less pronounced, okay? And then I'm gonna go ahead and erase this top line because we don't need it. All right, so let's continue. I'm adding in the neck. I'm not worried about the bow tie just yet. I am going to bring the neck down and connect it to the body. There's the left side. Okay, or the right, our right side, but the cat's left side. This comes down to the shoulder, comes down and out, and then 
connects to the bottom of the canvas, right? All the way down to the bottom edge. I'm not really worried about the little fur or anything like that. I'm just doing the general lines for that. Now, let me see here. Just making sure you guys can see everything. All right. So we got our ear, we got our neck, we got our shoulders. They connect down to the body. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do the hat now. Up here. The hat sticks out. Now, I'm just going to do this part of the hat here. Not this line down in here. This part of the hat. Don't worry, folks. I know I'm going to give you guys a little bit to catch up right now. A little time to catch up, and I'll check in on that audio. So this line that comes out from behind the ear comes out, connects to this line. Okay. Let me see if I can give you guys a little close-up. Okay. So obviously this is the line for the, for the hat, for the brim. Comes out on the, behind the ear, comes up, over. Now I can bring it up. Over on the other side because it's going to go out. Connects right there. All right. Give you guys a little, a little time to catch up. Let me um, – let's see what's happening here. Okay. Stop cutting out since you moved the mic. Okay, we hear you fine. Okay. Uh, it was cutting out on YouTube. I switched back to it to FB and it's fine. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Sounds like we're okay right now. I'm hoping that it stays okay for those. For, I hope it gets better for everybody. But if it does not, let's say this continues. I do have another mic that I can switch out to. Might take a moment to do, but. Um, I'll find a spot. If we continue having these audio issues, I'll find a spot. Once we start to paint, I'll find a spot where I give you guys a little time to catch up and then I will connect my other mic to my audio. Okay. We'll see what happens. What's happening. Wonder pointer. Woos. Ah, haven't seen you. In a Welcome back. But all right. Happy birthday, Zeus, says Gloria Marie. That's right. Happy birthday. I believe it was yesterday, right? Originally, this was planned for uh, Tuesday, but it's okay. We're here on a Wednesday. Still able to celebrate. All right, everyone. Here we go. Let's continue. Now, I'm not going to do anything with the face. I'm not going to do anything with the bow just yet. I do want to add in a hat. So, uh, the rest of the hat. So, what I'm going to do, right over here somewhere. So, if you were to follow his forehead and kind of just to use this as a reference line. This, if you were to kind of bring this line right here up, it would actually connect to the top of that hat just by coincidence. So we can kind of do that. Let's say we curve this line over. That's about where the top front part of that hat would start. Okay. Right about right here somewhere. So here's the front, the line for his forehead, right about right here is where that line starts. We're going to go up. Okay. Then we're going to go forward. Remember, night at the beginning, and then we don't darken up our lines until we, we're good with what we've got. Okay? So front part of that goes up into this peak. Comes forward, gets a little bit pointy. Then it goes back. I use my hand. I press it up against the canvas to support my hand a bit. Again, still using a very loose grip on my pencil. I'm holding it back here near, near the eraser. Okay, of course, this is that part right there. And there we come down. And then it starts to curve inwards. And it's gonna connect right behind that ear. Okay, right there. So it starts to curve back towards the front of the head. Connects right here behind that ear, and there we are. Okay. Once we've got that, we can go through and do, put in the little, I'm going to go ahead and put one in right here. Slightly curved. Okay. This one's going to be a little larger. 
a little more of a curve. So my hat, my uh, my hat has two white stripes, three red stripes, and then. Okay, give you guys a moment on that. Let me, I'm gonna darken these up a bit. Okay, and then let me give you guys a close up. Guys got about a minute to catch up. I just lost the tip on my pencil, so I got to switch pencils here. All right. How's the audio sounding, everyone? Let me know. Let me know in those comments how you guys, how my audio sounding. Hopefully it's good, how my audio is. Okay, Gloria Marie says loud and clear. Okay, good. Tracy Davies says it's all good. Thanks. All right. Hopefully the one way, everyone. Better on this end, says Penny. Okay, good. Shirley Lockhood says, says sounds good. Any of you that are on, uh, on YouTube, how's it sounding? Got about 35 people on YouTube. Let me know on YouTube. How's it, how's it sounding over there? It looks like my, my Facebook folks are saying it's improved or it's good, and let me know on, on YouTube, guys, how's it sounding over on YouTube? Now, there should be no difference, right? We're using the same audio, but maybe there's a problem with the connection to YouTube, so, okay. All right, Jordan, good. Keep me posted. If it starts to go haywire again, we may have to do something about it, but for now, I think I'm gonna leave it as is, okay? But all right, let's continue. Let's move on. So what are we gonna do next? Well. We could do the bow first, or we could jump and do uh, work on the face. Let's do the bow. So I have this line here that I used originally to mark off where the, of the uh, face would be. I'm just going to go and erase that because we don't need it anymore. Most of this is going to be covered up with paint. All of this is going to be covered up with paint. So I'm not really too worried about pencil smears or anything like that. I just remove them as best as I can, and then uh, I don't worry about it too much. Again, all this is going to be covered up with paint, so as long as I can uh, paint over it and not see them come through the paint, we're good. But let's talk about that bow. So the bow, this part right here, is right about where the shoulders start to come in. Actually, where the, it's where the shoulders come in and start to connect to the neck. That's about where the, this bow is. So I'm going to draw a nice little light line across there just to mark my spot. Okay, I'll, I'll probably be erasing most of that, but we'll see. Right in the center, I'm going to draw a nice oval. Okay, so of course that is the center part of the bow tie. Nice little circle. Okay, right, right above this line now, I'm going to come up a little bit, and I'm going to come out on both sides. This is the bottom edge of the extended parts of the bow tie, left and right. Of course, this comes out a little bit. doesn't come out too far. The bow tie, so this part of the bow tie there, just as a reference point, probably is really, really close, lines up really closely with the edge of the cheek. So you can use that as a reference point. You always wanna be using reference points as you're drawing. I know for some of us it seems it's a little more instinctive, but that's one way to get proportions right. You use reference points throughout to make things a little bit easier. So here's the edge of my cheek. If I was to come down like this, this is about where the top of my bow is. For those of you that are using a stencil, the stencil or the traceable, um, just bear with me if you guys are done. 
let us let us let all of us that are doing this from scratch catch up to you. Okay, so I'm just bringing this down a little bit, curves down, angles down, then curves over to the center, comes up over the top on the other side. Side is a little shorter than this, but it's kind of similar. This edge kind of lines up with this edge of the face. Comes up. Again, nice and loose. I'm not gripping my pencil really tightly. I made a quick correction right here. Extended this out a little because originally my line was here, my edge line was here. So I just brought it up a little bit higher. Take a little step back, take a look at your bow. When you're all done with it, little corrections as you need. You can erase these lines right here. And you're good. Okay, so I see somebody YouTube saying that it's good on their end also. Mr. Cheese on YouTube. What's up, Mr. Cheese? Love the name, by the way. Rosalind Cowell says or asks, will, will this tutorial be on your finish? I just got home from work and, and would love to try this later on. It sure is, Rosalind, and everybody, anybody else that has that same question. As soon as the live session's over, I hit the save button and it gets saved to both Facebook and YouTube, okay? So absolutely, you can come back and do this later. But okay, let's continue. So we're done with the bow tie. Actually, no, we're not done. We need the bottom part. So at the very bottom, nice little line that comes down, curves out, curves back up. Nothing real fancy here. Got another line on the other side that comes up, goes back in. Narrows up a bit and connects to the bottom part. Bottom part of that little ovalish tur. Okay, let's look at our cat's face. We're going to start with the. We're actually going to start with the mouth, and that mouth right about right in here somewhere, right where the cheek. This is the cheek comes in. Just to, let's take a look at the original cheek. Kind of comes out. We can make, we're gonna make a little bit of a, an adjustment to the cheek, make it look a little bit more like the original. Just minor, again, this is why we make light pencil lines or light sketch lines, just gonna curve this, make this curve a little softer, a little less pronounced. Okay, now, right down in here somewhere, we have this smile that comes inwards, right? So you can actually bring this line in, Connected to the smile, comes back out towards the back of the head, comes up a little. Okay, I'm not really worried about this right now. We'll add that that in later. For reference, I'm just putting in this line here for reference for now. Okay, that's all we're going to really do to the face, other than the eyes. We are going to put in the eyes. Now we're going to be covering these up a little bit, but I want to be able to see them. Uh, through my paint, and we once we do the paint, you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. But you will be able to see them. Sometimes, sometimes I'll paint first, and then I'll draw over the paint when it's when it's white like this. But just for reference, I'm going to go ahead and put the the eyes in now. So up here in this corner somewhere, nice little oval eyeball. Okay. A little bit over to the left of that. We start the other one. This one is a little larger. Now, when we paint over this, because it's white over this pencil. Now, if you're using chalk, you may not see your chalk when you paint over. Actually, you won't see it when you paint over it. But don't stress about it too much. We'll talk about this again. Okay. Eyes, mouth, ear. We're not doing the whiskers or anything like that, okay? Give you guys a moment on this. I'm not adding in all these little details, the eyebrows or anything like that. Again, we're gonna be painting over this and then we're gonna go back over it and draw over the top. I just want, again, for reference, just putting in my eyes. 
and my mouth. Those are the main points on the face. Okay, so take a moment with that. Bye, Helen Jones. Okay. All right, everyone. So take a little moment. No, every I'm just checking. I'm checking the um, connectivity and things like that on my end, and it seems like everything is reading okay. So hopefully all the technical difficulties are gone and we are in business. All right, here we go. Next step. Let's look at our fishbowl. Okay, we're going to be putting in a fishbowl. Little fishbowls over here somewhere. The top, the opening of the fishbowl is right about in here. Wherever you start it, you want to make sure you leave enough room underneath for this part. Actually, we're going to start. We're going to start with the bowl part of it, not the opening. We're going to start with the 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 base. Okay, just so that we make sure we leave enough room. So starting about right here, that's over here somewhere. Just gonna draw a little line. Turn this towards me a little. It's gonna do this. And don't worry, I'll darken this in a little bit in a moment. Okay, so I'm drawing in the edge of the fishbowl. Curved line that goes like this, goes under, comes back in, curves back up. Okay, almost like we're making a, an upside down letter C or a sideways. I don't know how you'd want to look at it. So you got the letter C like this flipped up, okay? And then once we've got that, we can go ahead and add the opening, the big oval. Okay, that's all we're gonna do here. Okay, this is all we're gonna do to that for now. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys about a minute, maybe two. I'll give you guys two minutes before we jump over to the fish. Again, folks, we take our time with this. We are at about, we're about 40 minutes into our session. So that's actually a pretty good time. What's happening, Ivy Berkowitz Bowles from San Diego? How are you? Thank you for joining in today. So who else is uh, celebrating a birthday? I saw a couple of birthdays, a couple of comments about birthdays earlier. Who else is celebrating a birthday? <laughs> Crystal, he does look a little creepy with just eyes. It's too funny, but yeah, a little creepy. <laughs> That's all right. We'll fix them up. We'll make them less creepy in a little bit. Don't forget, folks, for those of you that are new, if you guys are interested in finding out what, what other sessions are available for you to go back and do, uh, sessions that we've done in the past that were recorded and saved, go to the live tab here on Painting with Jesse on Facebook. Right on my Facebook page, Painting with Jesse. If you guys go to the top, click on the live tab at the very top, you'll see a whole bunch of videos there. I think we got about 80 now. And then YouTube, I've uploaded about half of them to YouTube. Oh, Jordan, that's right. Sorry, you're having, you're having audio issues on your birthday. Hopefully, all that's cleared away. I think it is. But happy birthday, Jordan. Everybody say happy birthday to Jordan, who's joining us over on YouTube. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I... I I've done this in the past on YouTube. I just want to make sure that I'm not giving out incorrect information. On YouTube, you're able to pause, back, and then, of course, jump back to the front on live video. Is that correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to be telling everybody wrong info. 
and everybody's going to be like, Jesse, what the heck? Brianna Marie says, mine was February 15th. Happy belated birthday to you, Brianna. Jessica Sigler, mine is two weeks away. All right, Jessica, two weeks from now, there's going to be a painting on here. Make sure you're on here so we can say happy birthday to you, okay? Amelia Jeggles Smith says, hi, my son's birthday is March 8th, going to be 10. Well, happy birthday to your son. Looks like just a few days away. Um, so if I'm not mistaken, on Facebook, you cannot back up live streaming, at least from my experience, but that, I might be wrong. Brianna Marie says you can do it on Facebook. <laughs> so Oralia Mejia says, mine was yesterday too. Happy birthday. Oralia, happy birthday. Here we go, guys. Let's continue. Let's talk about the fish, okay? So pretty basic. You're going to find a little spot for your fish. And your little fish could be up a little higher, lower. Who knows? Maybe your fish is under the bowl. He's, he's you know, flying through the air and is under the bowl. I don't know. Up to you. But my fish is going to be in about the same spot as on the original. I uh, just want to make sure, obviously, wherever you start your head, I'm actually I'm just going to mark off where the tail will be, this part of the tail. Okay, so I want my tail to be about right here. This curved line represents the outside of the tail. Okay, so the outside part of that tail is represented by this line right there. Okay, here is where this point is going to come back up. Okay. Right in here. This part here is this front part. Okay, so let's continue with that fish. <laughs> okay, Brianna, that's what I thought. Yeah, so once obviously once the record on recorded session, you can do whatever you want. Forward, back it up, pause it, all that good stuff on Facebook and on YouTube. But I think only on YouTube during the live feed, you can pause and back it up and all, all that other fun stuff. All right, let's continue with our fish. This bottom edge right here. Now I'm going to draw all the way through it. Connects to the mouth. Okay, we're going to come all the way across. This part right here is going to be the bottom part. Bottom. Not worried about that fin right now. Curve it up. Let me give you guys a close up. I know it's kind of far away. Okay, so we're just curving it back up. That's where the lip is going to be, or that's where the lip, our little fish's lip is. <clears throat> From there, we're going to open it back up, go upwards to the front of the head. Now I'm making this fish a little bit larger than the original. That's okay. Okay, that right there is the uh, top part of the fish. I'm not going to worry about the fins for now. It's going to come back. And we're going to connect it over here. Just going to make a little correction to my fin. Make it a little narrower. Connects right there. Comes back up just like that. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and add, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of fins here, the fins on top, little pointy things like this. I can erase this. I'm not worried about this fin right here just yet. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's put it in. Let's put it in. Right in here. And then I'm also going to add the eye. 
looks almost like a square. It starts off looking kind of squarish at the top. And then a little rounded towards the bottom. But none of the other details are going to be added at the moment. Um, I'm not going to add. Well, yeah, I'm not going to add the water drops you, uh, just yet. We'll add those later. Okay. So, all right, you guys got about three minutes before we paint. Okay. So take a little step back. Once you're done with the drawing part of it, take a little step back. Look at your piece from a distance. Make sure you've got everything. Okay, you're not missing anything. I'm just going to show you guys what we got happening over the next over the next couple of days. For those of you that might have missed it at the beginning, tomorrow, 3 p.m., we got this cute little bunny, spring Easter bunny piece. Okay. If you guys haven't seen this yet, go over to the to the event page. Whoops, there we go, trying to line it up. Go over to the event page. You'll find all the details on this supplies list. I'll be teaching how to draw this from scratch. Find some stencils or uh, uh, traceables that you can download right from the discussion board for those of you that don't want to draw freehand. Okay, that's tomorrow, same time as today. Then on Saturday, not sure how many of you joined in for my Valentine's Day event our Valentine's gnomes from last month. Well, we're doing the St. Patrick's gnomies. Okay, again, same thing. Go over to the event tab. You'll find all the details for this event as well as stencils, okay? But all right, guys. Here we go. I think we're ready to paint. You guys got about 30 seconds. You guys got about 30 seconds before we get going on the paint part of this. Again, guys, I want you guys to... Uh, Take a little step back. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this, put the canvas back, line it up so better reference point for you. I don't need to curve towards me anymore. But before we start painting, make sure you take a little step back. Look at your piece. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. And I apologize about this, but I am going to go ahead and add a little, the little jagged edge right over here. And the little fur, right? The little jagged edge for the fur. Okay. Uh, I also want to, let's see, is, is there anything else? No, just that jagged edge. Oh, on the lips. On the lip here, just drawing in this, the, the line for the lip. <clears throat> Down here. I'll give you guys a close up in a second. Just refining my edges a bit. I can go ahead and erase the original line that I did here. Remove that and just leave the jagged edge. Okay. We don't need any whiskers. We don't need anything else. Take a look at your hat. Make sure your hat's tall enough. My hat looks like it's a little on the shorter side, so I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit more. Just making a little adjustment. All right. Here we go. So what we're going to do first is we're going to work on the background. Now let me show you guys. Disregard the white and the light blue on this plate. That's all dried from a previous session. I've got this phthalo blue, phthalo blue color here towards the bottom. Whatever color your blue you have is okay. It could even be really light blue. It's going to work regardless. But that's what I'm using here. And actually, this color is going to be a little different because I did mix it with some brilliant blue. I was running low on my on my phthalo blue, and so I mixed it with some uh, brilliant blue to just to make sure I have enough. But what I am going to do is this: my two-inch brush, my big brush here. 
I'm going to dip it into my water cup. I'm going to bring a little bit of that water over. Okay, what I want to do is I want to mix a little bit of that water with my paint. The reason why I'm doing that is I, I'm not adding a lot of paint. I just, a, a lot of water, just a little bit of water. Look at that. I just got some paint on my cat's face. Give me a second while I take that off. Just taking a little bit of a water here on, on a paper towel. Just going to wipe that right off. But anyway, I've added a little bit of water to my paint. Just want to make sure that it flows nicely, but I don't want to thin it out too much. Okay. Now, once I've got enough paint on my brush, I'm going to come in here. Now, I'd like to try to maintain a smooth background as much as I can. So I'm going to do these long brush strokes. Okay. Now, if I go over some of the edges of some of my characters, like the fins of the fish, I'm not too concerned about it. Okay, so I'm using these long brush strokes, but some of you may prefer brush strokes like this. Whoops, got a little too much water on my brush still. So dripping a bit, I'll clean that up in a moment. So you can use these, uh, this cross pattern on your brush strokes to avoid having to try to keep using straight lines throughout. That's entirely up to you. I'm going to go back to my straight brush strokes. Let me clean my brush up a little bit. Anytime you have a little accident like this where you get paint flying all over the place, if you need to clean it, you want to catch it when the paint is still wet. It's just a lot easier to clean up. Okay? Otherwise, if it was all, if I was covering that whole area in blue, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay? But, so I'm just going to kind of go around it or get close enough to everything. Sometimes I'll outline everything first. I'll like, for example, I go around outlining my characters first. In this case, there's no exact one, you know, way of doing it. You don't have to do the exact same thing every single time you paint. I just come close. And I'll come back with a smaller brush in a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back over this area where I was demonstrating the crisscross pattern. Okay. Again, I get close. To my edges and then I keep going. I'm gonna go ahead and switch brushes now. I'm gonna go over to my one inch, this guy right here. allows me to get in tight in these areas that are a little, a little bit narrower, or a little smaller. Again, I'm not, I'm getting close to my character, to the cat here, but I'm not touching it yet. In a bit, I'm gonna switch over to a smaller brush and we'll go in and touch all of that up. So my background is going to, recover, going to require at least two coats of paint. This is the first one. Those of you that have been painting for a bit, you guys realize that this first coat is going to be a little transparent. Okay, if you're new to painting, if you're new to acrylic painting anyway, first coats are always a bit transparent. It can be a little uneven. You don't want to worry about that too much on the first coat. Get your paint laid down onto that canvas. We can always come back and add another coat later to even things out. We will come back later and add another coat, at least one more coat.
Whenever I'm done with a brush, it goes in my water cup. Again, so that it doesn't dry out. I'm going to switch over to, uh, let's see here. I'm going to switch over to my little flat brush, my number eight flat brush. I'm going to scoop up some of this paint. Now I can come in here and close in, close the gap, outline my edges of everything. Again, we're going to be doing a second layer of paint over all this stuff. Don't, don't get stuck trying to make things super even and clean on this first layer of paint. Not likely to happen. Put your layer down as clean as you can possibly make it without sitting there trying to, you know, make it perfect. It's not going to happen. Okay, now, one thing that I did forget when we were drawing is this. There's an edge to the hat in here. It's really dark right in here underneath the brim. So leave a little bit of an opening. And if you don't, if you missed it, don't worry about it. We can always, we're going to add that with, we can add that with black or really dark gray like what's on the original. So like right in here, right underneath the brim. Make sure you leave a little tiny bit of a space. Now, for those of you that have joined me in the past and you've seen me do the background first, before we do, um, before we do any drawing, right? Before we, you guys notice this is a much rougher background, especially on this first layer. That's the reason why I like to uh, paint in my background first. Makes it nice and smooth, and then we can draw over it and paint over that. But because this blue is so dark, if we sit there and uh, try to paint over this blue, let's say I've got everything in blue. When I go to do the white parts, it's going to take five, six layers of white to make everything really stand out. And we don't want to sit there and mess with that for too long. All right, once I've outlined everything, now I can go back. I'm going to go back over to my one-inch brush here, and I'm just going to try to smooth things out. using these long brush strokes. Now this is, you don't have to, and if you use the crisscross pattern to create your background, perfect. But if you're looking to smooth things out, just take your brush. I don't have, I don't have any paint on it now. I just, I'm just using the, just using, um, not a dry brush, right? But I didn't add any more paint to it. It's coming through here and smoothing out the paint that's on the canvas now so that the next layer requires a little bit less work. You guys will see what I'm talking about if you're new here. If you're new to painting, just trust in the process. The trickiest areas to try to make, smooth things out <clears throat> are here in the smaller sections, right? These narrow, small little areas. But all right, there we go. You guys got about two minutes, and then we're going to start painting on the inside of our characters. Santa Soto says my blue is darker. That's okay, Santa. It can be whatever color you'd like, okay? That's right, Penny, it would take forever to color in that blue, uh, cover, in, cover the blue over with white, okay? So 
you could do it that way, right? If you have the time and you wanted to do the background first, make it all nice and smooth. No worries. You can always come back, add as many layers as you need to make your white really stand out. Okay. But, um, but yeah, so that's an option. As I've said many times when I come on here, there's no one set way to do a painting. There's various options, right? There's different approaches, et cetera, et cetera. But all right. Nancy Bennis, you got it. My pleasure. Come on back and finish when you're all done with dinner or maybe tomorrow, et cetera. That's right. Happy little accident, Gloria. So Deb Gnomes are this Saturday, okay? The uh, St. Valentine's no, I'm sorry, St. Valentine's, St. Patrick's gnomes are this Saturday. Now, I don't remember the time frame. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember what time, but I think I'm, I might have set it up for one o'clock, one p.m. West Coast time. Just go over to the event tab, click on the uh, details. You'll find it there. Uh, you click on the details; it'll give you all the information. And then whatever your time frame is or time zone, you'll have to adjust for that. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, man. What's tomorrow? I'm sorry. The bunny is not tomorrow. The bunny is Friday. Sorry, guys. Yep, the bunny, the, the Easter bunny is Friday. Thank you, Gloria. That's right. The bunny's Friday. The gnomes are Saturday. Okay? All right. Here we go, folks. Now, again, don't stress about your background being perfect right now. We're not going to make it perfect on this first layer. Just look around, smooth things out where you can, and we're moving on. As we're adding paint layers everywhere else, this background uh, starts to dry, and we can come back and add more paint later. All right, so I'm cleaning up my uh, one-inch brush here and cleaning it up a little bit, right? It's got a bunch of blue in it. I want to clean it up. So I swirl it around my water cup, remove as much of the blue as I can. It's going to have a little bit of blue in it still, not that big of a deal. Okay, remove as much of it as I can. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my red. Now we can use a smaller brush for this if, if we want. Now on this step, this red against the white background it's going to make it look a little pink but i'm going to come through here this is the first layer of red let's start adding this all the areas that have red in it the hat and the bow tie are going to get taken care of right now if you need to switch to a smaller brush like i said you can do that also the a filbert brush would probably be excellent for this. A smaller uh, flat brush would as well. Also, guys, you got to be patient. I see. Um, so at least one comment. Somebody trying to, you know, speed things up in the comment section. This is about patience. There is no speeding things up with this. Well, we can speed things up a little bit, right? But <clears throat> there's only so much we can do. Everyone draws and paints at different speeds. If you're low on the fast side or a little impatient, well, you might want to uh, – you might want to paint with the recorded session. That way you can just speed over all the chit chat as an option. Okay. So there's my, there's my hat. And again, just like with the background, I'm not super worried about making everything super even and, and really bright. Things look a little pink right now. I'm going to have to come back and layer this switching brushes. Now I am going to take my filbert brush little rounded head brush. And if you don't have a brush like this, don't worry about it. This is, in the number, this is a number eight. I think in the, in the uh, supplies list, I 
put it down at number five. Don't worry about it. We're going to use whatever size you've got. It's going to take some red. And again, the reason why these filberts are good is you can use these to go around rounded edges like the bow tie or the face or the fishbowl. It just makes it a little easier. The right tools, right? Just like with anything else. If you have the right tools, your work gets a lot easier. And I just noticed when I do the second layer of blue, I'm gonna have to clean up my edges around the bow tie. So can somebody fill me in on what the drama was that I missed at the beginning? Somebody must have made a comment, a negative comment of some type, because I saw somebody respond with, hey, if you're not happy with this or you don't like it, you don't have to paint along. I'm sure some of you guys heard me talk about it a little bit. Not to bring drama into this, I'm just curious what that might have been. So if one of you knows, if you guys could just, without, you know, rehashing or anything like that. I can't imagine if it was a really negative comment or something that that person would still be here, but who knows? Yeah, not trying to start any drama or anything like that. Just curious. But all right, there's my bow tie. And again, if you guys notice, I can see, still see a little bit of white around my edges. I'll have to clean that up when I do a second layer of blue. All right, and what I can do though is I can start, again, smoothing out my brush strokes, paint inwards towards the inside of my bow tie. All right. That's right, this is a, this is a, a no negativity zone, Gloria, that's right. Terrell. Got to wait on the fish a little bit. Awesome. Shaney, happy to hear. Happy, uh, or happy painting to your seven-year-old. Oh, got it. Is that what it was about, Diane? Somebody was talking about the Dr. Seuss. Some of the Dr. Seuss books were banned. Yeah, we, we all saw that, right? Again, don't want to make anything. Don't. This is a politics-free zone, folks. Let's not get into any of that. If that was what it was about, all right, no worries. We're all still having a good time here. You know, I will say this. I did read up a little bit about it. I'm not going to go beyond this. Uh, from what I understand, Dr. Seuss did issue an apology some time back about some of the, some of his earlier work. Whatever your feelings are about it, I get it. Not, again, we're not going to get into that. Not what this is about. Enjoy the session. Okay, that's it. Only, only positive zone here. Exactly right. Gloria Lazama, positivity zone right here, okay? Grandma Carol, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you being here, okay? Thank you so much. This goes to all of you. Just want to say thank you to all of you for being here. Joining me today, having some fun with this cat and hat painting for today. But as you guys all notice, again, I just want to point some things out. Uh, the, anything that I've done in red right now looks a little bit pink. Don't worry about it. That will get fixed later, okay? So let's move on. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and paint our little fish in. Okay, so my fish is kind of a salmon color. I achieved that color by mixing a little bit of pink, a little bit of orange. I know I didn't, I don't think I listed orange in my colors list, but if you have yellow, or if you've got red and white, any of those, com mixing red, yellow, a little bit of white will get you a color that's similar. Your fish can be pink. Don't stress about it too much. I'm just cleaning up my filbert brush and my water cup a little. So this is what I do to clean up my brush. Right? I just kind of swirl it around in the water cup. I want to remove some of that extra color that's in there. 
So ideally what I would do with when I have color water that's this um, saturated with blue because there's a lot of blue in there is I would just go dump it out and get me some fresh water, but it's not super important. We can work around that. Okay, but anyway, just gonna grab a little bit of red, bring it over to my to the edge of my plate and grab a little bit of pink. I mix the two together. Now, if you have orange again or yellow, you can kind of mix that in there. So red, pink, or red, white, and orange will get you kind of a salmon color. Red, white, yellow will get you kind of a salmon color. So mix your pink till the color you want, get the color that you want. So red, yellow, white, red, white, orange, any of those combos will work. Okay, so here we go. Just gonna take this and everything on the inside of my fish is gonna get painted other than my eye. Again, I'm using my filbert, my number eight filbert. When I paint the fish, I do paint in the direction of the body, just to kind of smooth things out. I start to give my fish shape by painting in the direction of the body. If you guys notice everything on our original has an outline. Okay, once you do the outline is when everything really starts to stand out and separates from that background. But the outline doesn't come in till last. All right. Just like that. Okay. Back into the water cup, my brush goes. You guys got about two minutes before we go on to the next step. What's happening, Ozzy? How are you, Ozzy? Thank you for stopping by. It could, Jessica, it could absolutely just be orange if you wanted to. You just have orange, you want it to just be orange, make it orange. If you want a yellow fish, make it a yellow fish. It could be a green fish. Okay, whatever color you want. Red fish, pink fish, blue fish, doom fish. I knew that that sounded like some kind of rhyme, Dr. Seuss rhyme when I started naming the colors. And here comes Susanna Garcia and uh, throws in a Dr. Seuss rhyme at the bottom. <laughs> That's funny, love it. But yes, whatever color fish you want, right? If you're painting, I want you happy with it. There's no rules. There are no rules. I just, I'm just here to guide you guys along, help out, kind of help you create, right? But if you guys want to make changes to your painting, please feel free to do so. I'll be more than happy uh, when I see your pictures. Oh, and then on that note, don't forget, send me pictures of your paintings. Okay, when you guys are all done with them, today, tomorrow, the next day, please copy. Send me a picture to Painting with Jesse here on Facebook through Messenger. Uh, or you can also email them to me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com for those of you that are on YouTube. Paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, okay? But all right, let's continue. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and drop in a layer of white everywhere on the face, the ear, of course, all the white parts, um, the bowl, the eyes on our fish, okay? And for that, just take one of your larger brushes. It could be a number one flat. It could be your filbert. It could be whatever brush you want to use, whatever brush you feel comfortable with. Clean it up a little bit, right? If you've got some red paint on your brush or blue paint on your brush, you want to remove as much of it as you can. Otherwise, your white paint might turn slightly tinted, right? Might turn out slightly tinted blue or slightly tinted pink or whatever. So just clean it up as best, as best as you can. Swirl it around in that water cup. Use paper towels to squeeze out 
that extra paint, kind of like this. Okay, clean it up, clean it up. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to grab some white, just straight white. I'm not mixing with anything. I'm just going to come in here. Now, I often will do all the edges first. And yes, I'm painting over other than the eyes, okay, other than the eyes. For the moment, I'm painting over the mouth line that I drew, as long as I can still see it, because I can still see it coming through. Okay, first I'm painting in all these different directions. When you get to the little corners of the fur, you might have to switch to a smaller brush. I'll do that in just a bit. But for now, I'm using this bigger brush to cover more of the canvas more quickly. Again, this is just white. I didn't mix it with anything. Now I'm switching brushes. Okay, actually, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to uh, put this back in the water cup just yet. It's not, gonna be, it's not gonna be sitting out of the water cup for too long. It's gonna leave it right here next to, uh, next to my paint. Okay, right on my plate, right next to it. I'm gonna switch over to my number. Let's see here. I could use the filbert or I could use my number five flat brush. This guy right here, and the same thing. I just wanna clean it up. Okay, I don't want there to be any wet blue in there to mix in with my wet paint, my white paint. <clears throat> Dip it into my, right into my white paint. I'm gonna paint down here around my bow tie and into the shoulders. Yes, we've got some black we're gonna be adding here later. Now I can go in here, paint in the corners for the fur, come in here to the lip. So once I've got a layer of paint on here, what I am going to do is here around the cheek, just gonna curve it a bit, use curved brush strokes to give my face a little bit of dimension here, a little bit of depth. Okay, then here on the face, just bring our brush strokes down, maybe across the forehead, I go up and across. Curve my brush strokes into the fur. There we go. First layer, using my same brush, just gonna come up here to the white strips. And then let's not forget the brim, the brim of the hat. Now, some of my regulars, some of you that have been hanging out with me for a while, painting with me for a while, here's the task that I have for you guys. You guys all know by now that I often forget things, right? I'll forget a little step here or there, some little minor thing that for some reason my brain doesn't see. Here's what I'm, here's what I'm thinking I might forget. And that's the little, the little dark part underneath the hat. 
So if towards the very end you see that I haven't put that in, please remind me. Okay? Say, hey, Jesse, you forgot the uh, shading underneath the hat. So that way I don't forget. I'll add it here in a little while, but I always tell myself that. And often I still forget when it comes right towards the end. I'm getting close to the end. And somebody will remind me. Or there have been times where I just forgot completely. Somebody didn't remind me or whatever. But anyway, that's the task. Okay? Remind me of those little areas right here. These two gray areas underneath the hat. Right there and right there. Okay. Let's paint that bowl. I'm going to do the eyes here in a little bit when I switch to a smaller brush. Just come over, paint the inside of our bowl. Now watch what I do with my brush here, especially with the bowl. It's important. I'm using curved brush strokes from one edge of the bowl to the other. Even though it's really subtle, it does give the bowl some dimension. It's all one flat white paint color, right? But as I sit here and I curve my brush strokes, those little tiny brush strokes that you can still pick up with your eye, even if it's subtle, will give your bowl a little. Here in the opening, just simply just paint that in as an oval. Okay, and again, same thing as with some of the areas that I've got over here. I'm going to come in and tighten up the edges around the bowl, clean things up a little. Okay, switching to a small brush now. A little number three round. Okay, just dipping my brush right into the paint. I'm gonna cover up my fish's eye. And then I'm gonna come in here and so I can stay. Here's what I here's why I'm doing this with this brush. I'm not gonna cover up my pencil lines here. And yes, there have been other paintings where I do everything all in white and then come in and draw over the top of them. I like to try to show you guys different, different methods, different processes. See what you guys decide works best for you. In this case, I'm just painting on the inside, leaving some of my pencil lines around the eye to make it easier to draw those in when we come in with black. Okay. All right, so take a little bit of time there to catch up with that. Um, I was going to use this for my bowl, the big number one brush for my bowl. And I'm just using it now just because I, I was going to, but I'm sticking it back in my water cup, okay? For now, you guys got a couple minutes. Go ahead and cover up your all your white parts, and we're going to continue. Now, for those of you that uh, are interested in helping support the page, I often get people send messages. There's a couple of things people always ask. Hey, do you do art kits? Okay. Uh, one of the most common things that I get is people asking for art kits. They don't want to go out and buy all their supplies and stuff. I partnered up with a... Uh, website called zoompartyroom.com. There's a link in, link in the description of the video when you guys have time. You guys can go check it out. I'm offering two uh, art kits that are for a couple of upcoming events on Painting with Jesse. Now, nothing changes with the actual events themselves. For those of you that are going to freehand with me, for those of you that are going to draw like you normally do or, or use a stencil from the discussion board, etc., none of that changes. But as a little bit of an experiment, but also to try to get these on a regular basis. The little leprechaun here for uh, March 17th, we have a little kit that has the canvas, that has the paints, the brushes, and um, an apron, and uh, a little paint palette. Okay, for those of you that are interested, you guys can purchase a kit directly from zoompartyroom.com. Again, the details, the link is in the description of this video. I'll also have a coupon code um, to share page over the next couple of days to get a discount on them. But I'm also, we're also doing a paint kit for the Mandalorian for uh, this is the way the event on the 19th of March. Okay. Again, for those of you that are interested, 
The uh, website link is in the details of this video. Don't worry about going there now, but when you guys are all done, you guys can go check that out, okay? All right, uh, that, anyway, that helps support the page. Uh, also, just make sure that you guys are sharing the page. If you, for those of you that are new here, you know, um, or when you guys post your, your masterpieces on Facebook or YouTube, et cetera, not YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, if you guys could tag the page, that, that would be fantastic, okay? Helps uh, grow the channel, the channel and the Facebook page. But all right, let's continue here. So what I want to do now is we're going to go back to the blue, the background, okay? And we're going to do another layer of blue over all this. All this is dry. I thought we were going to need – I have my uh, blow dryer handy. I don't think we're going to be using it today. All this is nice and dry. Just going to pour out more of my paint. I've got that mixture of mostly potato blue and then a little bit of brilliant blue in there. I'm going to take my large brush. In this case, I'm not going to be mixing any, um, any water with my, with my mixture. Just taking out my big number two, my two inch brush from my water cup and kind of clean it up a little. Now, Watch what happens here. On this next step, my background's gonna get a lot more solid, a lot cleaner, a lot smoother, a lot deeper. Okay, a lot more even toned. Now, in some cases, for some of you, you might wanna do a third layer. We'll see how this looks after, I've, after this layer dries, we'll see if, and if there's time, we'll do a third layer together. But just coming through here, again, same process as at the beginning. I just kind of come close to everything with my big brush. I'll come back in with a smaller brush in a bit. I'm going to use my two inch brush for all the large areas. And then of course, I'm going to switch over to my one inch brush. Okay, done with my big brush. Got to clean up my one inch brush here. Had a little bit of white in it, so let's get that out of there. Here we go. The other thing that I might forget, or we don't want to forget, is the whiskers on Mr. Cat. So you guys got to keep me on my toes. Go, hey, Jesse. And of course, that doesn't come till later, though. The whiskers on the cat, once we've painted in the background. So here, I'm just going to, out, again, outline everything, right? And again, I just want to emphasize that the outline could have come first, cut outline first, and then came in with my bigger brushes. That order doesn't really matter too much.
I'll be updating the calendar this week. I've got at least four more events to add this month. I think right now, if you were to look at the event pages, like six, maybe, I think six, maybe seven events counting today that are listed, but I'm going to be adding at least four more to March. So make sure you guys stay tuned. All right. Again, once, actually, I'm going to switch over to a small brush first. So I'm going to come in with one of my small brushes and outline everything. If you need to switch, so I switch to my um, number five flat. <clears throat> you could switch to your one of your round brushes, also, right? Also, if you come really, really tight <clears throat> with your outlining with this, with our dark blue right now, just remember that everything's going to have a dark black outline. That's also going to help compensate any areas you might be able to see a little bit of white or lighter areas around your edges. <clears throat> Excuse me. The black outline around everything will cover some of that up. All right, <clears throat> so once I've got my layer in place, switch over, clean up my brush, and then I just smooth things out. I come in really tight. <clears throat> you can use sideways brush strokes, vertical um, brush strokes but I'm just smoothing everything out. And again, if you guys are using a crisscross pattern all the way through, you don't have to worry about this smoothing out process. So for example, if I was doing this all the way across everywhere, the background isn't quite as smooth, but it still looks uniform throughout. As long as you're using the same technique throughout the whole area. Now, if you're using sideways, sideways brush strokes on some of it, vertical brush strokes, crisscross pattern over there, then you're going to have a really obvious um, and uneven background. As long as you're, you stay nice and uniform with the brush stroke throughout, it's the uniformity that um, create, creates the clean look. And again, we'll see what all this looks like once this dries. We'll see if I need a third layer. But okay. You guys got about two minutes, and then we move on. Yeah, the horses that are coming up. Let's see. Crystal Dornan says, super excited for the horses. Uh, I'm trying to remember the date on that now. I know it's a week and a half or so away. But yeah, that one's going to be a fun one. That's going to be a lot of fun. Sandra Marie Ramirez. Hello, Jesse. We are late. Zoe, Jada, and Sandra from North Las Vegas, Nevada. What's happening? Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Better late than never. And again, don't forget, 
There's a re this, this is being recorded, so if you want to paint with a recorded session, you can do that also immediately after this is done. If you're on YouTube, you can back it up right now and start from the beginning, okay? Tabitha Jolene Roscoe Kennedy says, horses on March 10th. There you go. The horses on March 10th. I don't have the painting here. I left it at home. Uh, it's not in my studio, so I can't show it to you guys, but that one's going to be a fun one. <clears throat> All right, everyone. Isabel Torres says, I just finished the blue. That's okay, Isabel. Don't stress about it. This is a stress-free environment also. At least it's meant to be. Take your time, folks. If you, fall, if you fall too far behind, you just, when I'm done here today, you'll just continue with a recorded session, okay? Uh, don't stress about it. Also, make just, your painting's going to look a little different than mine. That's also okay. All right? So... About 30 more seconds, we're going to go ahead and add another layer of, layer of red on everything to even things out. And then we're going to get into adding, uh, let's see, another layer of white to the face. And then we get into the detail. Okay. So in the meantime, if you're ready, go ahead and start cleaning up your brush, whatever brush you're going to be using for the, for the red parts. I'm going to be using my number, let's see, my number five flat brush. Okay. My little number five flat, uh, flat. this guy right here. Just cleaning it up, removing all that blue, and here we go. Grabbing some red. Start here over right at the top of my hat. And again, if you'll notice, as I do this, my red starts to get a lot more bright, a lot more even, even in tone. And then, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you that would like to help support the channel in other ways, I do have a virtual tip jar. I'll put up the information in just a little bit, but it is the information is listed under the description of the video. I have a Venmo, I have a PayPal, and I have a Zelle. Okay, PayPal and Venmo is simply uh, painting with Jesse all one word look me up under my g my email which is basically painting with jesse at gmail.com again for those of you that would like that are able to and would like to help support the page um and then zell's just my phone number 951-217-2237 you can also help by inviting your friends telling people about the page and the channel on youtube the more the merrier so now I'm just coming over and doing another layer of red over the bow. Okay. Okay, and then of course, my fish also needs another layer of paint. So what did we mix for that? Again, I made a little bit of a salmon color by mixing orange, pink, and red. You would be fine just mixing orange and red. Orange, yellow, white, all those combinations will get you kind of close. And if you want an altogether different color fish, that's perfectly all right also. And then don't forget to send me pictures of your masterpieces when you're all done. Whoops, almost dropped my paint plate. That one would not have been as happy an accident. I have floor covering, but, you know, having to clean up the mess <laughs> isn't so fun. All right, there's my fish. You guys got about two minutes 
and then we move on. So let me know, folks, who else is having a birthday on here? Where are you guys joining me from? I know uh, probably missed a whole bunch of your comments, right? Can't, it's always, it's always uh, a little tricky to catch up to see all the comments come through. But where are you guys joining me from? Who are you with? Whose kiddos need a shout out? Let me know in the comments section. So those of you that are interested, <clears throat> there is my virtual tip jar information at the bottom of the page, uh, on the screen, bottom of the screen. Again, I do have a Venmo, PayPal. All they are is at Painting with Jesse. You'll see my picture at the top, holding a canvas or something like that. Speaking of which, I've got to update those pictures pretty soon here. We'll see. <clears throat> and then my Zelle is just 951-217-2237. For those of, you that, those of you that can and would like to help support the page and or channel, that's how you can do it, and it is greatly appreciated. Okay? So you guys got about 30 seconds, but hold on. Actually, you guys got about a minute. Let's go back to those comments. Danielle Bradley, what's happening, Danielle? Welcome back. I know you've been on here with us a few times. Love it. Lynn Frost Hutchins from Nova Scotia, Canada. Welcome, Lynn. Hi, Lydia. Six-year-old Lydia will be six on March 7th, says Ginger Byers. Everybody say happy early birthday to Lydia. Hi, Lydia. Okay, Danielle says Danielle Bradley isn't Danielle Bradley. It's Victoria. She's on her mom's account. Hi, Victoria. Let's see, she, Shiloh and Shane from Canada. What's happening, Shiloh? What's happening, Shane? Thank you for being here. Brooklyn, seven years old from Russell, New York. What's up, Brooklyn? Let's see. Hi, Sim Possible. Sim Possible. Is that like Kim Possible? It says, first time painting with you. Awesome. Welcome. Laws Page from England. Laws from England, all the way out from England. Fantastic. We're all the way out in England. Pretty cool. Pretty dang cool. Let's see. Mary Lou Moran says, hi, I'm having a lot of fun from seven-year-old Daniela and Valentina in Queens, New York. Daniela and Valentina in Queens, New York. Hello, ladies. Welcome. Catherine Vogel, hello. All right, everyone, here we go. Let's continue. So, Next step, we're going to add a layer of white over everything, okay? Just cleaning up my one-inch brush here. Again, we can go, we can start smaller if we'd like. It's usually safer to go a little bit smaller. Makes it, e makes it uh, less likely for you to go over your lines, right, your edges. So just coming through, I'll switch over to a small brush here in just a little bit. Even though we're painting white over white, it does make a difference. The white of the canvas is a lot more matte of a matte finish. Whereas even matte paint, matte acrylic paint tends to be a little tiny bit <clears throat> brighter or glossier. So I'm just going through here kind of quickly. Again, I'm going to painting on the inside of the eyes. Okay, down in the body. Use your own discretion if you need to switch over to a smaller brush, whatever brush size you're using. You wanna be careful around your edges, right? Thought I was gonna switch brushes, but I'm gonna keep this one. Okay, white, of, white parts of my hat. Here's where things might get tricky for me with this size brush. Kind of a big brush for the area. Living dangerously. Okay, the brim. Oh, 
Oh, my ear. The ear, look at that. Hadn't layered in the ear yet. There we go. That's how my brain works. <laughs> Almost forgot the ear. But all right, here we go on the bowl. And what do we do with the bowl? Curved brush strokes, curved brush strokes. So different brush, different brushes can do similar jobs, right? I can be using the filbert for this or one of my smaller, even, my, even a round brush would work here. Curve brush strokes like this. Okay, now I'm gonna switch. Going for my number five flat. Actually, it's my number eight filbert. Going to paint the top in here, and I've got a little bit of red left in there, so it's turning my white a little pink. So let me clean my brush up a little more. Got to get a fresh paper towel here. Let's clean that up. All right, just cleaning up some of my edges in here. Okay, my little fish is white, the white on the eyeball or the inside of the eye. Now I'm going to go ahead and take one of my round brushes, my number three. I'm going to mix a little bit of black and white, make a little gray. Guess what I'm doing right now? The area under the hat that I missed. So I'm making a dark gray. Doesn't have to be super dark. Put a dark gray down here under, right underneath the brim. I'll give you guys a close up in a moment. You can see a little bit underneath the hat. Okay, let me give you guys a close up. So again, using one of my round brushes here and here. I'm, I painted the underside of the hat. Okay, all right, minute and a half, two minutes. Lily and Charlie Pollock from Quebec. We're having fun and look forward to the bunny too. Awesome, Lily and Charlie, welcome. And hope to see you painting with the bunny on Friday. Brianna Marie asks, where do you guys get your canvases from? So uh, I think somebody just mentioned Michael's Joanne. Yep, Diane said Michael's Joanne's or Hobby Lobby. So I'm in California. Hobby Lobby, uh, Walmart also has, or haven't seen them there for a minute, but they had a, quite a variety of uh, canvases canvases there for a bit. Michael's uh, is kind of close to me. I can also get them from there. Uh, even a lot, some of the Dollar Tree places have some of the smaller uh, canvases. But any one of those places, you can also order them online. Amazon has a pretty decent selection. But around here, the cheapest that I found them is Hobby Lobby. For me, for this size, uh, 16 by 20, the 8 by 10s, 11 by 14s, okay? But yeah, lots of people are answering the question. Thank you guys so much. Really appreciate that. But all right, everyone, let's continue. We are almost two hours into this, so let's pick things up a little. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my number three round brush. We're going to do some – we're going to be doing some uh, – drawing in in black 
outlining the eyes, the eyebrows, the mouth. Okay, my number three. So I've got some black right here right on my plate. Now my black is a little bit on the side. And because I'm going to be doing some nice thin lines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my black paint. And I'm going to, so this is an old plate. It's got a bunch of old paint on it. Dried out paint. Just going to find a little spot. Bring my black over. Put it there. Now I'm going to take my brush. I dip it into my water cup. Okay. So I'm going to bring a, a couple of drops of water over. I'll do this a couple of times. I don't want super watery paint. I'm just trying to thin it out a little. Because I'm going to draw with this, make thin, line, thin lines with this, the water helps the paint flow a little bit better. So that's what I'm doing, mixing water in with my black paint. Now, I'll mix it in really, really well. I'm holding my, my plate sideways like this because if I mix too much water with it, I'll see the paint start to run, which is what you don't want, okay? So there we go, I've mixed some paint in there. Next thing I'll do is when I pull my brush away from the plate, I'll spin it. I press the brush into the plate and then I spin and pull away. This makes the tip a little bit skinnier, a little smaller. What I'm going to do, now I understand we just did this white stuff, white paint, and some of this area is a little bit wet still. I'm gonna start up here on the hat. I'm just gonna start outlining things. Okay, now, if yours, if you feel like yours needs another layer of blue on your background, no worries. We're going to outline anyway. You can always come back and add that later. I'm not sure yet that I'm going to have time to do a third, a third layer of black, sorry, of blue. Uh, I could probably use it just to even things out a little bit better, but we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and do the outline now. We'll see where we are towards the end. And if there's time, I'll come back and do another layer of that blue. In which case, I might have to redo my black outline around the edges of my hat or where, whatever areas that I add my outline to. But that's not that big of a deal. Okay. So take a little gauge of your painting. Are you gonna need a second layer or a third layer of background color? If not, join me in outlining. Otherwise, don't outline around things. We're going to start drawing here on the inside in a moment. I'm probably confusing you guys, so give me a moment. I'll explain it again. Let me think about how I want to do this. So if you guys are going to be doing a third layer of paint on your background, consider not outlining the outside of things with me right now. Only join me for the stuff that's on the inside, okay? Then you would do your third layer when there's time, if there's time towards the end, you'll join me if I do a third layer. Otherwise, you'll do that third layer on your own, and then you can outline after that dries. Okay? So don't stress too much. Whatever you decide to do, it's not that critical. You could do your outline and then do a third layer and still be fine. Okay? So up in here, I'm just going to outline the hat. Don't forget to make sure you add a little bit of water to your mixture. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, now I know some of you may not have a number three. You might have a number four, a number one. You can have a zero, right, like I do. Whatever you want to use, be fine. So right here on these areas, here's what I'm going to do. Because I'm painting on an easel, I'm going to take my hand, my non-painting hand, I put it right on the canvas. This is all dry, so I can put my fingers on it. Then I place my painting hand over my wrist. Okay, and I can do those areas in between my red and the black, uh, red and white parts of the hat. This helps stabilize my hand. Now, if your painting is still wet, too wet, take your blow dryer and dry it really quickly. Now, and, and then this step is a lot easier to do. Mine's pretty dry. Okay.
Sometimes people use paint, paint pens for this outlining stuff. And it's a little easier to do if you've got a paint pen. There are some good thin acrylic paint pens out there that people can use, that people like to use to do a lot of the outlining. So if you've got one of those and you want to use one, feel free to do so. Also, what I like to do is usually when I'll start an outline, especially long lines like this, I just go all the way through. Okay, I start it and I just complete it. So in other words, I don't stop in between and restart. I try to go all the way through. The only times I'll stop is if, if I need to reload paint on my brush. Okay, so there we go. I just outlined the hat and outline the ear now. All of this outline makes, outlining makes everything stand out. Okay, stand out against that background. Okay, so there's an outline on the ear. Now, I'm not going to continue the outlining of the face just yet. I'm going to start, I'm going to start drawing on the inside of the face, starting with the eyes. Again, my hand. This time it goes on my table. Don't forget to spin your brush a little to make the point nice and thin. Okay. So there's my circle right up here. Does stick out a little bit over the top. Okay. I'm going to give you guys a moment after this eye to catch up. I know I moved through the out outlining kind of quick there, kind of quickly. So there's my eye, a little wrinkle underneath. Okay, gonna add the pupils. You might wanna switch over to a smaller brush, it just depends. Or you can also do it with the back part of your brush, the handle, dip it right into your paint, put your little pupil on, right on the canvas. I'm gonna do it with my, my brush. Gives me a little bit more control. There we go. So take a few moments on that. Let you catch up a little. Hi, Laws. Not yet. So the splashes will be coming here in a little bit. But yes. The splashes, very important that we get those in there. Okay. But yes, if you guys see me getting close to the end <laughs> and there's no splashes, make sure you guys remind me. We'll be adding those in in just a little bit. No. So, Paula, no, it does, it does not actually. The original does not have gloss on it. What happened is that the paint that I used for this is a little bit of a different type of paint than this, okay? There are different types of paint out there, okay? The paint that I used on the original is a little bit glossier. There's matte finish, there's semi-gloss uh, finish, and then there's gloss finish. And actually, there's several kind of in between. It just depends. It's just the brands that I use are a little different. And yes, the, origin, the original is a little glossier, okay? By accident, I didn't. I wasn't really trying for any specific finish, but it's just two different brands of paint. The one that I'm using over here right now is from Artist Loft. Okay, uh, the one on this side is just a little bit more of a matte finish, and it's an Artist Artist Loft brand. Whereas this over here is a is the Fine Touch. Okay, the Fine Touch paint on this one. So there you go. Depends on the look you're going for. But all right, let's continue with drawing on the face. Okay. Back to my number three. Eyebrows. Okay, right up in here. Now you can do this with pencil first if you feel more comfortable. And then outline. Up to you. But somewhere up in here, a nice little curve. 
Okay. I'm going to add more black paint to my plate. Okay, just mix in my mix to the original mixture of, of uh, water and black. If you need to add a little more water to yours, feel free to do so. Still have a, <clears throat> let me see. Yeah, I'll add a little tiny bit to mine. Okay, eyebrow, other side. Right up in here between the broom of the hat. Okay. That one has a little eyebrow here that actually layers over the brim of the hat a bit. So we can start it right in there, drop it down. Okay, I'm using my pinky here. I place my pinky right on the canvas and stabilizes my hand a bit. This one also has a pair of eyebrows that overlap the brim of the hat. So right here. Another one here. This one has, those are, that's not an eyebrow, sorry. Those are more like wrinkles, right? Not an eyebrow. This is the eyebrow. And then these are wrinkles, forehead wrinkles. Okay, once you've done those little lines there, you're gonna come in and do the mouth. And again, face is dry is to the touch. You may want to take your blow dryer and blow, and maybe take a minute or so to, to blow dry everything, okay? If not, we'll continue right here. The outline for the mouth, right? Not the outline, but the line for the mouth comes up. Using that pinky, okay? Right here, I'm gonna add the little crook on the edge of the mouth. Can get the little nose down here, kind of an oval shape. Find a little spot, maybe a little closer to the left eye a bit. Use your pinky hand stabilizer. Okay, you guys got about a minute to catch up with that. Just bring some more black paint onto my plate. Whoops, let me uh, remove the banner. There we go. Awesome. Thank you, Shane. No, it's actually this is a lot brighter. Yeah, this is this is this is a, a uh, shinier finish. Uh, again, this is a different brand, Artist Loft, and uh, the Fine Touch Paint. Okay, all right, let's continue. So we're gonna get into this ear, little section on the inside of that ear. I'm gonna outline. The area first, kind of like this. Okay. I can fill it in now. Again, still using my number three round. Then here on the little edges, I'm just going to bring these little lines that stick out a bit. Okay, possibly the trickiest part of the painting on the inside of the face is this black area right in here. Okay, what I wanna do, I'm not worried about all these little lines on the edges. I'm gonna create the shape, the general shape, starting down here by the neck, this part down here. So right on this edge, I'm just gonna come down, scoop it back up. Now careful, right? You don't want to get too close to the to the mouth. So maybe around the mouth, 
outline that first, kind of like that. And then you're going to bring it up. Don't make it too wide. You want to make it nice and narrow. These lines here on the edges are, are, going, to, are going to be what give it a little bit more thickness. So make sure you're, so this line here is on the inside of the face, this right here. All this that I just created is this, okay, on the inside of the face. So I'm just going to come up. This is going to, so I didn't leave enough room for above the ear here, but that's okay. Just going to bring this up. Goes under my ear and kind of does that. And then it hugs the edge of the face a little bit, not too close. You want again, and you want to give some space there. Comes in, back down, down here at the bottom somewhere. Go, it touches the edge of the neck. Comes down like that. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in right now around the bow tie. Okay, like that. I'm also going to go ahead and fill this in. Okay. Once I've done that, this is what I'm going to do. Taking my, again, my number three. Don't forget to spin it. Add water in your paint if you need to. And I'm, speaking of which, I'm just going to bring some paint over for my plate. Dip my water brush, my wash, my, my brush in my water. Bring that water over. Mix it into my paint. Now, what I'm going to do is this. Add little lines in here. And I'll, on the inside also. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring this through to the other side. Now down here, we do hug the edge, and I also want to give some, add in some of the little tufts of fur, of fur. Okay. Create the general area, and then I can start adding in my little stripes my little uh, lines, kind of like that. Same thing on the other side. Remember, take a little step back from time to time. Look at the little areas. Look all the, at all the little areas and see where you need to make little adjustments.
So the little water splashes up here can be a little bit transparent, right? It's water and they can be slightly transparent. So painting those over the uh, blue is, will work. You can't really tell too much, but these are a little tiny bit transparent. So you can see a little bit of light blue. They look a little, almost light blue. In case you guys were wondering. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and continue the outlining around the face. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm actually bringing my outline to, to make my face a little bit smaller. My face, if I put the outline on the outside, let's say on the outside of the white, even though it's really subtle. So again, on the outside edge of the white, the face is going to get a little, a little bit longer, a little bit bigger. Okay, in this case, I don't want that. I'm looking at the face and I'm, so I, instead I put it right on the inside edge of the white, if that makes sense. So my outline doesn't go on the outside edge or even right over my pencil line. I'm gonna hug the inside edge to make the face look a little bit smaller. So here. Right on the inside. Kind of a subtle, again, it's a subtle little trick. to help minimize the look of the face a little, the, the width, <clears throat> just a touch. Most people probably wouldn't even notice that. Okay, I'm gonna go and outline the lip, same thing. And then I bring this little line in a bit. There's the lip, right? Okay, and then, okay, I know that was a lot. The very last thing I'm going to do on this step before I give you a little time is I'm going to outline this edge now, okay? So now in this case, I'm going to go on the outside of the white part, on the outside edge, because if I go on the inside, I'm going to narrow this up too much. You're not going to see much of that white on the edge if I go on the inside. So in this case, I'm going, to go, I'm going to go on the outside. A lot of little subtle nuances that will go into a painting. And then I do want to bring this line and connect it to the ear, right? So this line right here for this side of the head comes up and connects to the ear. Okay, let me give you guys a close-up. We also, so I'm going to give you guys a moment there. We do want to outline the bow tie to make that stand out. We're going to add whiskers and the details. Before we add the whiskers, we're going to do the fish, the bowl, the splashes, and then we'll put in those whiskers. Okay? So, all right, take a moment there, everybody. <laughs> Isabel Torres says, my hand is shaking. Isabel, it's okay. Use it, use it to your advantage. So yes, it's sometimes tricky to hold um, your, pen, your hand right up in the air like this to kind of freehand it. So use what you can to stabilize it. So you'll get, you can get used to it over time. Well, if you've had a lot of coffee or sometimes some medical conditions or medications will make your hands a little shaky, right? You can use that in your favor to your advantage. You kind of work, learn to work with it. And sometimes it actually helps you. Um, but yeah, if, if you can, use the little techniques that I showed you, right? Use your pinky, use your hand, uh, stabilize your other hand above it, that sort of thing. Penny, your husband is very sweet. He brought you cheese and crackers, but I think maybe because he knows this painting is for him, this painting that you're making, I believe, oh, wait a minute. He's a Peanuts fan, right? So maybe this one's not for him. I'm not sure if I remember you saying this was for him or not. Cheryl Gonzalez, no worries. If you're late to the party, you're late to the party. It's all good. All right.
Still got quite a few of you hanging out. Fantastic. All right, Penny, I got you. This is for you. Okay. Cool. Then he is, he has, he is extra sweet. Because since this isn't for him, to see, then he's extra sweet. That's, that's for sure. But all right, folks, let's continue. I'm going to outline the bow tie. Same process. Now, in this case, we can go on the inside or on the outside. It all depends on what you want to do with it. Do you, want, do you need to make it smaller? Do you need to make it a little bigger? If you need to make it bigger, then you go on the outside. If you need to make it a little smaller, you go on the inside of your outline. Okay, I'm going to do the little center. There goes my hand. And I have this little blue area that I have to come in and cover up the background. Okay. Bottom part. Whenever you put in a little bit of water in your paint, it sure can help it flow. And it's something that you'll learn to do. You'll get better practice, right? Just like with everything else, the more you, more you paint, you'll kind of learn to gauge it. And how much, how much, water your mixture might need. Right here, this, there's this little wrinkle in the ties, a little, little fold right here. So don't forget to add that. Just a little line that comes out. Okay. As soon as you're down, done with that, we're going to move right into our fish bowl. And the first thing I'm going to do is outline it. Okay. Don't forget, folks, if you're running behind, if you're a little slower and you've fallen behind, don't stress. The recorded session will be available right afterwards. Okay. Now I'm going to come up a little near the outside edge of the rim, then I'm gonna go and complete this under. Okay. okay, now I'm gonna go to the inside. Again, if you're more comfortable doing this with pencil first, go ahead and draw it, and then do the, or with chalk. But I'm gonna do the, going to do the inside, the opening. If you need to make any corrections, like let's say it's a little crooked like mine is there. But because it's wet paint, it's really easy to clean up. Take a paper towel. I'll dip it into my water, even though this is blue water. I can come in here and just lightly. Don't want to rub too hard. I can remove any paint. It's a lot easier when it's all wet, right? If it's dried paint, that's a lot harder to do. Clean it up. Okay, there we go. A little bit better. Now, right here. Okay, other side, same thing. Okay. Right over here, my little, all these little lines that are 
slightly curved, giving my giving the fish bowl a little bit of dimension. Start with some small ones at the top. Okay. Okay, down here. Over here. You guys got about a minute, and then we're going to outline the fish. We're going to add some details to the fish, add our splashes. Actually, you know what? We're going to do the we're going to do the splashes before we do the fish. Oh, so Jessica Siegler, yes, let's talk. Um, Jessica's asking about the kits. So again, folks, I just want to um, kind of remind you guys, I mentioned this at the beginning. I also mentioned it on our last session from a few days ago. It was a few days ago already. I partnered up uh, with ZoomPartyRoom.com. It's a new website that's helping me uh, kind of produce art kits. So lots of people have asked me over the months that I've been doing these, I get messages of people asking, hey, Jesse, do you provide art kits? Do you sell art kits? So we're doing that. Uh, the first event that we're providing an art kit for is the uh, St. Patrick's Day event on the 17th where we draw, the uh, draw and paint the leprechaun. Then two days after that, we're doing the Mandalorian, the uh, This Is The Way. So for those two events, We've got paint kits available. There's going to be more paint kits uh, coming up over the next few days. We'll talk some more about that. I'll, I'll post information up on uh, Facebook about that. But if you guys, tomorrow or the next day, I'll be posting up a coupon code on my Facebook, where if you click on it, also on my, on my YouTube, it'll take you over to partyroom.com, and you can look at the two kits. Anyhow, the kits are going to have canvases, the paint you'll be needing, a little paint palette, uh, an apron, brushes, and some paper towels, that kind of thing, just some basic kit, all the basic supplies you need. Oh, the stencil, carbon copy paper to be able to put the stencil onto your, onto your canvas. Uh, so anyhow, I'll have more details up on my Facebook page, but the website is zoompartyroom.com, and um, there will be a coupon code you guys can use to get a discount on those kits. Okay, it's kind of the start of some really cool things to come. Okay, but that's the first two kits that we're going to be offering. Okay, and nothing else changes though. Again, everything else with the events stays the same. You're still going to be able to follow along with me if, without the kits, just like you are today. I'll be making the stencils available through the discussion tab on the event pages and that kind of thing. Okay, but anyway, more you'll see more info on my Facebook page coming soon, coming soon, and YouTube. But all right, paint splashes. I'm going to use my number. Three, the one that I've been using to do the outlining. Just going to clean the brush up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to, now you got to use my zero yet. My round number zero. Okay, but I'm going to start with the splashes here. Number three, you can use, use your number zero if you'd like. Okay, right up in here, we got the first splash. Okay, a little rounded head, almost like an elongated teardrop. I'm just dipping it right into the white paint, not mixing it with any water or anything like that. Here's another one. Don't forget to spin your brush a little bit like I just did. Okay, again, just elongated teardrops. Um, if you've got some room in between here, putting a little splash, maybe I will do, let's see, uh, this little splash is going to change directions a little bit. 
Kids going towards our cat. Once you got your little splashes outlined, you go ahead and fill them in. Okay. Maybe there's a little segment. Okay. Below that little line along the path of the drop. The uh, link to, to zoompartyroom.com um, is in the description of this video also. So if you guys later on wanna, when we're done here, you guys wanna go check it out. The site's still under construction. Don't worry too much about the pricing that's on there for the kits. Um, I believe that's still being kind of updated. It might be updated when you guys get on there, but I'll have more information on that later in uh, tomorrow or later in the week. Okay. But again, folks, nothing else changes to with my events. If you guys want to hang out and paint freehand with your own supplies or with the stencil that I provide on, uh, you know, the event pages, that's all still going to be available. <clears throat> Don't know if I plan on changing that anytime soon, but. Haven't uh, haven't thought about any of that. That's all staying the same. So there's my little dress. Okay. Now after we do that, we can go ahead and continue with our fish. Now I, just to use it, <laughs> since I told you guys to have it, I'm going to switch over to my zero round brush. Still still working with the black. Bring some water over. Whoops. Here we go. I'm going to start with the eye. Just outlining the eye. So things like the art kits and stuff, right, right now, it's all of it's still being worked out. We're still figuring things out. Shipping's in the United States, I know that eventually part of the idea is that, you know, we'll make them available in Canada and who knows, you know, all over the world. We'll see. Starting with the United States first though. All right, I'm gonna go around and same idea. If you want to make your fish a little smaller, you paint on the inside of your outline. If you wanna keep it about the same size, you paint, you paint right on your outline. If you want to make it a little larger, then you paint on the outside. Let me see if I can bring this closer. I made that a little bit wider than I want, so let me fix that. Wasn't meant to be that wide. Let me go ahead and do this. Again, paper towel, a little bit of water does wonders. Now, to avoid that, I'm going to stay on the inside of my fin. A little better. 
too much water and left a little water in there on the canvas so that I'll have to wait till it dries a bit to fix it. But you get the idea. Okay, right here on this fin, there's a line that comes in like this. Okay. This fin also comes in. Then here along the sides, got those little lines. Our fish has an eyelash. Whoops, a little too, too big. That still works. Okay. The uh, eyebrow, the forehead wrinkles. Just cleaning up the mouth area a little bit. Okay, something like that. And now I'm going to go ahead and outline my splashes. They're a little bit dry now. So these, so a difference between these artist lofts, loft painting that I'm using, paints that I'm using now, is they dry more quickly than the than the paints that I used for this. The fine touch paints that I used for this take longer to dry than these do. Of course, those are, as you guys have already noticed, those are a little glossier. Actually, quite a bit glossier. I'm just outlining the splashes, and I know that my hand was covering the paint a bit, paint, uh, what I'm painting over, but it's kind of tricky. Okay. Over here. All right, in a moment we're gonna do, we're gonna do some whiskers. Okay. So take your time with that. You got it, Teresa, not my pleasure. <laughs> Penny says, Penny says, my my cat somewhat looks like a skunk with a stripe on the back of the head. It's all right, Penny. Bye, Siri Chandra. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining in today. Laws, it's 1.30 a.m. in England. Pretty late, Laws. Awesome, though. Thank you for being here, of course. First time watcher says Wanda Reagan. Awesome, Wanda. Thank you for being here again. All of you that are here with me today, we have uh, about half the group, maybe a third of the group that was here earlier, right? Right at the get-go. At the beginning of the sessions is when we have all the, we always, always have the largest group, right? And as we're painting along, some people paint a little faster or they can't paint the whole time through, so they stop partway through with the plans of maybe coming back later. But for all of you that are still hanging out right now, you guys are troopers. Thank you very much for, for hanging out this long. I know for some of you, it's pretty late. And then for some of us, where right, we can paint for hours and go through the night, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, no, not at all. It's so the zoompartyroom.com is, is a website. Somebody's asking, I'm uh, just to clarify, zoompartyroom.com is a website. Now uh, the website's still being, uh, it's still under construction. There's all kinds of stuff that we're adding to it. I'm just kind of helping out with the project. Um, but we are, you know, in the process of improving it and making it better and making it eventually we plan to offer all sorts of services through it uh, around art. But for now, we're starting out slow with art kits, but the website is zoompartyroom.com. Uh, again, still under construction. Over the next couple of days, I'll have more information, coupon codes and that kind of stuff on my website, on my Facebook and my YouTube. Okay. But all right, everybody, let's do some whiskers. Didn't forget the whiskers. <clears throat> surprise, surprise. But here we go. Number zero, round brush. Okay, a little tiny pointy thing, right? You guys have already, you guys have already seen me using it, similar to the number three, round. Black paint, bring it over. Add some water to it. Tip my brush into that water cup, bring some of that water over. Make sure to blend in that water and the paint really, really nicely. Spin my brush, make it nice and pointy. So we got one whisker here towards the top. You can start out towards the edge and bring it in if you'd like, okay? Which is what I'm gonna do right here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this with, with me holding the canvas up close. So I'm starting from the outside edge coming in. When I start on the outside edge, I'm barely touching the canvas. So that just the very point of these bristles are touching. As I bring it close to the face, I press down on the brush a little bit more to widen the whisker a little bit more. So here, oh, I think I'm covering up somewhat. Hopefully I'm not covering it with my hand. It's tricky to do it this way. Okay, a little thicker than I wanted to, uh, but that's okay. That still works. If I didn't like it, I, I would wipe that off and then do it again. Okay. Did you guys get the idea? Again, holding it and doing it, painting at the same time is a little tough. But you guys get the idea. So over here, I could use it. I can do it like this with my, my pinky right on the canvas. I can do it with my hand like this. I'll start, this time I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out. When I start on the inside, I press, put a little more pressure on the brush so that it makes a wider base, and as I start to come out, I pull away from the canvas, it thins out the line. Push down, start my way out, pull away. As I pull away, it makes it nice and skinny. But again, you wanna make sure you're using a small brush and then you want to turn the brush. As you pull it up, push, press it against the uh, plate. As you pull away, you, you spin it. <clears throat> making that point a little bit smaller. Another whisker right here. Again, press down a little, start to come out. As you head away, as you get towards the point to the end of your whisker, start to pull away, makes it nice and pointy. Okay, and I'm actually, I'm not liking that whisker, so I'm gonna clean it up and do it again. A little water on my, on my paper towel, just like I did earlier with some of the other parts. There we go. <clears throat> I'm gonna give that a little time to dry. I don't wanna paint over that wet area. So because I've got all this blue on my in my water, I've got, um, as I'm cleaning this up, there's some light blue on my white paint. So what I'm going to do, take a little bit of clean water, and wipe all this off. There we go. All right. Now 
That's dry enough now. So now I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out. There we go. I like that whisker better. So let me step back and take a look at everything. So I could go through and refine some stuff like my black, right? I can kind of just go through and make sure things are a little more even, a little bit uh, more refined. Take a little step back. Look at your painting from a distance. So I'm just picking some spots to go through and uh, touch up. The eyes, for example. Just making them stand out a little bit more. If there's any areas on your on the black parts doing another little second layer over those will obviously make them stand out. Take a look at your red. Doesn't need another layer of paint. I could use another layer of paint on mine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. This time I'm going to use my little filbert. Make it a little easier to stay on the inside of my lines. Especially now that I've outlined it with the black. Now, if you guys did your outlines like I did and you're looking at your painting and you say, hey, I could use another, a third layer of paint on my background, even things out a little bit better, clean it up a little, you could go in there and do that third layer, maybe even a fourth layer, who knows. You would just kind of use the same process as we used at the beginning. I would start with outlining everything first with a really small brush. Go to your number zero or your number three and the outline blue all the way around your edges. And then come in and put in your layer, your third or fourth layer of that blue. The more layering you do on the background, the cleaner it becomes, the smoother it gets. Maybe not smoother, more even. Again, I just want to remind everybody that often, usually, I'll paint my background first, completely, right? And the reason why I do that is because I want to really, I like really nice, smooth backgrounds. So I'll take the entire background, paint it all in, okay? Whether I'm going using vertical brush strokes or horizontal brush strokes, I do them all, do the whole thing at once. Then, once that's dry, and if I need to, I'll take out my blow dryer and speed up the drawing process, then I'll draw over it and paint over that. But just like this white right here, you can see a lot of the blue coming through underneath it. Had we done the background first and then drawn over it and then painted over that, it would have been really difficult to get that white to be really, really white. And it would have looked bluish, light blue. So to not have to deal with that, we did the drawing first and then painted in the background around it. Um, painting in the background around your, your characters like we did here makes for the for a background that's not as even or, and not as clean. Okay. You could, I'm going to show you really quickly. One thing, if you have a really uneven background and you don't like it right now, you're going, nope. Even with the second, third, fourth, fifth layer, you're not happy with it. You could instead... And I'm going to do this a little bit down here. 
you could instead do a layer of crisscrossing. Outline everything first. Outline your characters, your fish, your splashes, and then you would come in and do this. By, criss by using this crisscross pattern, and you do this all the way throughout, you're going to minimize the areas that look on, you're gonna, it's gonna be less likely that you're gonna be, your eyes are gonna be drawn to any areas that look uneven. Because these, this crisscross pattern, and you'll see the difference here in a moment. Because this crisscross pattern is already using kind of uneven short lines or brush strokes that are going in different directions, it takes away the focus from those long, even brush strokes. So if I did this throughout the whole entire painting, it's gonna be a little more pleasing to the eye. Then if I leave it where you can see some of this, you guys see all of this in here around, right? So I could use this, I can take all of this, these, this kind of crisscross pattern and I could switch it up a little bit and go in different directions too, right? I don't have to go exactly a crisscross pattern. But the unevenness, the change in direction throughout, as long as I'm uniform with the entire process, that cleans up my background. And while it's not as smooth as that would be, on this one here, I painted in the background first. And it took me like six coats of white to get it really nice and clean like that. But this here is a nice alternative. And again, I would do this throughout. Now, in here in these small sections, I would switch to a smaller brush, right? But it will work. As an alternative, this will work. As long as I maintain this pattern throughout the entire painting, it'll end up looking nice and clean. And will take my eye away from any of those areas that currently you may not, you may not like. Okay. So again, just an idea and alternative for those of you that want that aren't happy with your backgrounds and want a more even looking background. So you guys see this right here? I'll give you guys a close up in a second. If I do this all the way around, Look, look how much cleaner this looks here. Now it's still wet, mind you. Got to let it dry a little bit so you don't have all the, all, any of this light kind of reflecting off. But if I do this all the way throughout, it's going to look nicer than this. See this area here? Okay, even if I come in and do another layer over that, I'm still going to have some unevenness that my eye is going to pick because this is really smooth and then it gets choppy in here. But if instead I switch it up and just make everything kind of, kind of choppy, but all the way around, you're picking up as much, okay? Again, just an option for some of you that may not be too happy with your background. And of course, I just wanna emphasize, of course, that I would do this everywhere, right? I would come through and do it all over the place. It's gonna go all the way around everything, okay? I'm not gonna do, do that now just because it'll take some time and we're already at 5.50. But all right, everyone, so just a few things. I didn't paint the edge of my canvas in this case. I did on the original. I usually like to paint my edges. Some people don't like to paint their edges. There's no right or wrong to it, but there's the difference, right? I didn't do the bottom, um, but my sides, I did do my sides just a little cleaner that way. I would, in the end, I'd flip it over, paint that, and let that sit, set that there to dry, okay? Of course, then, then you also wanna sign your piece when you're all done. I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I sign it, but I would come in there and sign it. But 
I do want to thank all of you that joined me today. Hopefully you had some fun with me. I know a lot of you guys aren't done yet. A lot of you are not done at the moment. You're probably going to need a little time to, you know, to catch up or, um, you know, maybe you're going to continue tomorrow. I don't know. But don't forget, send me pictures of your paintings. Send them to me here on um, Painting with Jesse on Facebook through Messenger. Uh, or you can also, if you're on YouTube, joining me on YouTube, you can email them to me at paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, paintingwithjesse at gmail.com, J-E-S-S-E, -S -S -E, okay? And don't forget to join me to, uh, Friday for the Easter bunny kind of spring event. For those of you that would rather, let me, let me pull it up really quickly and hold it up. I've had, I had somebody ask me, hey, what if we don't put any of the eggs in it, um, making it less eastery and more spring? You can do that. You can take the little eggs out of it, right? It's the eggs that actually make it more of, a, more of an Easter um, painting, but you could. Anyway, this one's Friday. Saturday is the Nomies, St. Patrick's Nomies. I know, just to, trying to be funny with the Nomies, right? But it, uh, a little... St. Patrick's Gnomes. On both of those, you'll get the details. If you go over to the event tab, click on that. You'll see all the information under the discussion board. Um, and then, of course, folks, again, just flashing, putting up the information for the virtual tip jar for those of you that are looking for a way to help support the page and the channel. Oops, I just lost. Oh, I just lost the light over there. Well, that's no good. I think uh, I think I one of my... Um, when the breakers in the building trip, sometimes uh, the breaker trips. Luckily, my internet isn't on that on that circuit, or else we'd be in trouble. But anyway, folks, I just want to thank everybody for hanging out with me today. I am super happy to have you guys all here hanging out uh, while we paint painted this awesome cat in the hat. And let me look at the comments, just make sure anybody's going. Hey, Jesse, you forgot something. <laughs> but anyway, everyone, just. Uh, don't forget to send me those pictures, and hopefully I'll see you guys over the next few days. And stick around. For those of you that are new, make sure you guys follow the page so you guys can stay up to date on all the new events that I'm going to be adding. Okay, I'm losing my voice here, getting a little, a little tired, winding down a bit. But um, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here, and I will talk to you guys all very soon. Okay, bye-bye.